and Starfighters. Welcome to Mad Science Films. I'm Jimmy P, filmmaker and sexual astronaut. And as ever, I'm joined by my furious co-hosts. James Morrissey, one half of the Mad Science Films team. Uh, so guys, you've been enjoying the Mad Science content and want to subscribe to our channel and come follow us on Facebook. Uh, any comments or suggestions, leave those in the comment section down below. Let's crack on with the show. Awesome. Also, guys, please check out our fourth feature film for free over on YouTube. Just search for Little Monster or click on the link in the show notes below. This week, we're campaigning for a forgotten masterpiece of genre cinema to be given the beautiful Blu-ray treatment. And this week, for some reason, we've allowed James Morrissey to choose. So, James, Yay. what do you think Come you're on. doing? <laughs> Right, guys, so here we go. This is Night Wars starring Dan Haggerty. Uh, this is from 1988, and I have a synopsis. It's a very poorly worded synopsis, so just bear with me. So two Vietnam veterans have realistic nightmares about the war. So real are these nightmares that they start getting injured in them and bringing things back that they had in the dream. Then they buy weapons and go in to try and get one of their friends out that originally died in a POW camp during the Vietnam War. This is made this is made harder by a traitor from the US military corps. So I come across this film and it was kind of uh, put across as platoon meets a nightmare on Elm Street, and that just got me instantly kind of interested. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and basically, that's what it is. So it's Vietnam vets who were tortured by the Vietnam War, uh, ridden by guilt of uh, forgetting a uh, part of the squad, uh, a guy by the name of Johnny. And it's these two guys then just suffering with like this PTSD, post-traumatic stress, nightmares about the war. But then they had this kind of... So it's taking PTSD... A real horror within itself. I mean, you could just do a film about that and you don't have to make anything up. It would be horrific to see. But they kind of do this through the filter of like a horror lens. Do you know what I mean? So they had this very inspired, not an Elm Street kind of concept of, you know, the dreams. Within the dream, you could really die and be hurt by it. Um, and I really dug that. There are some flaws in the script. It doesn't quite make sense or... There are a few things you kind of go, all right. Uh, and some of the acting isn't the best in this, uh, but it does star Dan Haggerty. And we've been on a bit of a Haggerty blur. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 star yeah. Him. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He because feeds... I want to manage expectations. Yeah. We love absolutely. Haggerty. Yes. And when you said it's Platoon meets Nightmare on Elm Street starring Dan Haggerty in Message, yeah. I was like, fuck yes. Somebody yes. made a movie and didn't tell me. Just for me. <laughs> It does feature it a bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but he does bring a little bit of credibility to the uh, to the film. Uh, but yeah, he's not in it enough to uh, say star it. Um, I think let's let's be honest. Most films could be improved by more Haggerty. Oh God, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm enjoying this uh, finding Dan Haggerty horror films. Really enjoy yeah. that kind of yeah. uh, little journey. I think I think we should both get matching tattoos. N M H needs more haggerty yes yeah absolutely or t-shirts maybe we should do that have you got any room left on your on your arms yeah uh, uh, i could well that's there good there i could yeah. tell it well that's fine there you Thank go you that one. Empty and, and like you know gangster gangster you know fun <laughs> yeah um but so the guy who done this so david Pryor. Uh, who directed this and co-wrote, I think. Yeah. Uh, he seems to be, he seems to like that kind of army genre of film. And he's done a couple of other films where he mixes horror with uh, you know, military. Um, yeah. Oh, this one film that eludes me, I forgot the name of it. It's like a vampire one. Uh, uh, is it Lost? Uh, either Lost, lost or Lost Platoon, one or the other. Something like that, yeah. But um, so he's definitely into this kind of mash of yeah. horror and military kind of films. Um, but yeah, I, there's some genuine, really kind of scary kind of moments in it, like some really freaky moments, you know, mixed in the, the dreams with reality and what is a dream? Is this reality? Blah, 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 blah. And just really get the, um, you know, how these vets are tortured and plagued by these nightmares. I really kind of bought that. I thought. Did come across quite well within the film um and i did like their uh 
uh, McGregor, who is the uh, traitor of of the squad, and he becomes like the Freddy Krueger. He yeah. becomes the face of, of of the nightmares, and he did have this wide eyed, kind of wild performance, which I I I did uh, I did dig. But um, yeah, it was a lot of good fun, a lot of good fun, and I liked I liked the concepts, I liked the mashing of that. I thought it worked quite well, so yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. I, I agree to an extent. So the concept is brilliant. And I think, yeah, like the one sentence pitch that uh, you described it as and, and all of that. I love that concept. And I think it works really well as an idea. Um, yeah. And I remember watching the first, op- this is the first time watch for me. Um, but I remember watching the first opening 10 minutes of it and going, holy shit, Jim's actually picked a genuinely great film. Because right. it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's flashback to Nam. And um, he sat in this chair and he puts a gun in his mouth and it's not the best performance in the world, but the editing and the music and everything really works to like, yeah. be like, holy shit. Okay, man. And I wish it could maintain that level of like, like interest for the rest of the film. Mm. Cause that opening 10 minutes, I think is absolutely like nails the whole concept of the film overall. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I mean, I, I typically when I watch films for this, like um, if I'm re-watching them specifically for the show or watching them for the first time in the show, I'll watch it at least twice. Um, and usually if I end up watching it more than twice, it's because I'm just not feeling it. So I watched this film four times because I was just like, I want this to be good. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah. this to be better. And it should be. Like, as you said, mate, the PTSD thing is like traumatic on its own um mm. and one of my recommendations kind of links directly to that idea yeah um and the idea of doing like a freddy krueger movie but not with teenagers and doing it about mm-hmm. other people who yes would suffer terrible dreams yeah. is a brilliant idea and also do you know what any idea where you take a horror concept and then you pit it against a bunch of soldiers brilliant and there are some visuals in there which are like completely absurd and make me laugh but i also kind of love it at the same time so there's the bit where the two dudes are in bed with machine guns <laughs> yeah. and they're firing machine guns while asleep at the ceiling because of their neighbor just, yeah it's crazy it's bizarre but i love it because there's no other movie where that could be a scene which would make any sort of remote sense but honestly like that scene makes the movie for me and the opening 10 minutes are great and i think yeah like as you were saying with the bad guy being a traitor rather than like just a vietnamese soldier yeah i think a that was probably to do with casting and being able to get a decent actor um of any ethnic background and they went with you know what was available but it also then sidesteps any sort of you know like accusations of racism about this you know this evil foreign other or whatever by making it a traitor you know it dodges all of that um the guy is great um and i love the ending and again sorry guys for spoilers but the ending where it's before he's turned evil um and they seem to have flashed back and they just shoot the fucker (laughs) just in case and it's just like that's kind of hard. Yeah, I, I, I thought maybe actually, maybe it, it, it's, the whole thing wasn't like a premonition that he was going to turn back. Maybe the sergeant was going crazy. Maybe just yeah. this poor guy was an innocent. And just the whole idea of war was just corrupting his mind, giving these weird paranoid dreams. Definitely. And I think there's a couple yeah. of different interpretations of that that you could do. But unfortunately, the film yeah. wasn't quite strong enough. Like the, the audience has to do a lot of the heavy lifting. So, yeah. yeah. Um, as you said, mate, it could have been that, yeah, the, 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 the sergeant is just going insane in the jungle and all of mm. this is just in his head and it's how he justifies killing this guy at the end. Mm. Uh, alternatively, it could be that there's no dream shit at all. It is just PTSD and it's self-harming, mm. you know, yeah. so, you know, all these cuts on the necks or whatever they could have been doing themselves. Mm-hmm. But I think that's us maybe reading a bit too much into it. And I think David Pryor as director and co-writer probably needed to add a bit more to there um like like with all of these recommendations my recommendations and your picks i can i can forgive bad acting i can forgive bad special effects but if your film starts to get boring and especially when you've got such a great concept and you're wasting it that's when i kind of check out and and i wanted to love this film literally man i i saw it four times 
and I kept on trailing off at the same bit and then picked it up again at the end when they decide on the plan. But there's this chunk in the middle of the movie where I'm just snoozing and I I wish I wasn't. I wish I yeah, wasn't. yeah. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Can't love them all, Jim. We can't love them all. <laughs> but that's not to say that you guys shouldn't also check out this film yourselves. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Jim, who do you think is best place to put this bad boy out on Blu-ray for us? Again, you know, 80s master horror, you know, it, it, it lends a bit, I think, from Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, it lends quite a bit from Nightmare on Elm Street. So it's definitely, uh, but it's kind of unique in its, in its own right as well. So I've gone for uh, 88 films. I've gone for 101 films and I've gone for Arrow as well. I think they could do it a... Maybe a bit of justice. Um, but yeah, it's just, just those, yeah, nice, cool 80s horror films. So I think, yeah, nice. those. Yeah. Yeah. I've gone with Vinegar Syndrome. Um, I think, yeah, they pick up that obscure action meets something else genre from that period. Um, yeah. And I think they could they could put out a really good release. David A. Pryor is like a really interesting guy. And in 1988, mm. if you look on IMDb, he directed four films. <laughs> wow. And do you know what? Night Wars, whatever you say about it, is ambitious. So if that mm-hmm. was one of four other films that he, he did during that period, then hats off to him. I gotta say that. So yeah, fair play. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've gone with vinegar. But yeah, yeah, I can see I can see 88 putting it out and arrow putting it out as well, definitely. Okay, Jim, you've watched Night Wars. You're not ready to go to bed because of the PTSD. What is the next film that you're gonna put on? I've gone for Jacob's Ladder with Tim Robbins. Yeah, it's a very dark film. So similar in the fact that uh, you, you, you're in the head of a Vietnam vet and you don't know what's real and what's, uh, what's uh, you know, a dream. Um, but yeah, really haunting, dark kind of film that. So uh, Tim Robbins, Jacob's Ladder. And if you want to just be a bit more um, upbeat, I guess, so a horror film which has a Vietnam sequences in it is House. Oh, yeah. Um, nice. So, yeah, a lot of fun, similar in a way, but not quite. But uh, yeah, Vietnam, horns in house, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, absolutely second Jacob's Ladder. It feels like Night Wars is seen jacob's ladder although i'm not sure the timeline works out but it feels like the, the late one, mate, I yeah think. yeah yeah but it, it does yeah. feel like the action remake of jacob's yeah. ladder a bit despite yeah. how chrono you know chronologically it might come before um i also decided with a horror meets army kind of thing dog soldiers just good fun. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. werewolves versus yeah. a platoon um and it gets the army thing right for me you know it, that they mm. genuinely do feel like a bunch of squaddies as opposed yeah. to actors playing soldiers so yeah. Yeah, yeah and then also guys if you want to check out more from uh david a, a. Pryor, um he has done so much stuff most mm. of which i haven't seen um, i'm actually intrigued by his because i checked his imdb and there's a lot of like look really cool films so yeah definitely looks cool so hopefully yeah he is yeah cool. but hopefully. one i definitely have seen and was a video shop favorite at a certain age was uh good cop bad cop <laughs> Um, starring Pamela Anderson at peak Pamela Anderson. So, you know, post-Baywatch wow. explosion. Yeah. Uh, also known in America, I think, as Raw Justice. Uh, I'll, I'll throw up the video cover, and if you're of a certain age like me, you'll you'll remember this video cover, if nothing else. Uh, yes, it was a video shop favourite for, for yeah. me at about 14 years of age, so that would explain quite a bit. So, yeah. <laughs> also, though, <laughs> in addition to that, something for the ladies, uh, if you must, David Keith in drag shooting people. So, you know, something for everyone, I think. Yeah, so yeah. There yeah. we go. All righty, guys. Have you seen Night Wars? What did you think of Night Wars? <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, what do you think would go well on a double bill with Night Wars? Uh, and are there any other recommendations of forgotten films that you think are the blue for blu-ray treatment if so let us know and jim what else can people do so guys if you do like this video then please hit the like button uh if you've been enjoying the mad science content or subscribe to our channel and come follow us on facebook any comments or suggestions they leave us in the comment section down below thank you and goodbye be gone
Thank you.